here's the encouragement I give you. The shortest distance between your child's heart, your grown child's heart, and Christ is you. Parents need to own that they are the primary disciples of their child. Our goal in parenting is not for our kids ultimately to get a great education, as good as that is. Our goal is not for them to be great athletes. Our goal is not for them to go on great dates and have find a great husband or a great wife. Our goal is not for them to have a great career with a great job, making great money. Our goal is for them to love a great God. A great God. A great God. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here's your hosts, Ron Hunter and Jeremy Lee. This is the podcast that helps you build an excellent family ministry in your church. I hope all is well. We've got a great show for you today. Ron, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. No complaints at all. I'm excited about today. Yeah. I uh, actually was sitting at, I shouldn't say where, I was sitting at IHOP late last (laughs) night reviewing this interview so I'd be ready for this podcast today. And it was literally right at closing time. And I'm, I thought, man, I'm going to tweet out you and, and Michael Baines who this is about. And I thought, this is really going to decide to go ahead and do it. But, man, that, this interview coming up, it really – there's there's some richness to it. Uh, there's some wisdom yeah. that Michael is sharing here. This is the, – yeah, the, today's guest uh, – well, we have two. It's Michael Bain and Marie Cook who is going to talk about special needs. That's going to be great as well. Uh, but Michael, he's a buddy of mine. He works with me over at Parent Ministry. He is just the, but he's his his full time job is executive pastor of Grace Church in Clarksville, Tennessee. He is so 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 smart and uh, just a great guy. So I'm really excited for y'all to listen to him because he's gonna be talking about having a healthy church. That's right. That's right. And you, you know, kind of talk about healthy churches too uh, all the time. But I mean, <laughs> he does a really good job because he's walked this you know his church through this and. Yeah. You know, when when you talk to people who's been there literally doing it, it, it makes a world of difference. Pastors want to hear from pastors who have just recently done this, mm. and he has, and he's got a good grip on it. Yeah, because he's such a close friend, I've got a, I've gotten a, a very close behind the scenes view of all the things he's had to struggle with. You know, making changes on his staff uh, when he's had uh, people leave his church for uh, moral failure type things. He's had. Uh, people try to start churches right next door that used to be in it. He's he's had pretty much all these different situations as a young uh, leader, and he's just uh, the lessons he's learned from it is just it's going to be great. So we can't wait watch, for you. Watch out, Michael! Your uh, inbox is about to blow up. There we all go. These things. There we go. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. After this break, we will hear from my man Michael Bain, and he's going to be talking to us about what it looks like to minister to the modern family. And also what it looks like to have a healthy church in the midst of all that. We'll talk to you later after the break. See you soon. What's it like to be a member of the D6 Leader Network? Well, what if I told you that you could hire an intern for your ministry that would plan your sermon series each month and create amazing graphics to help promote it? What if that same intern helped you train your volunteers by writing an online teacher training every month that includes a fully produced video without you even having to touch it? What if that same intern created a fully designed parent resource that they can actually use to help them spiritually lead their family? What if that same intern was able to get you access to every main stage talk, breakout, or interview D6 has ever done at their D6 conference for your own training and development? That would be the best intern in the history of the world, right? Well, becoming a member of the brand new D6 Leader Network is like hiring an intern to do all of that and more for around a dollar a day. We make your life easy. We make awesome easy. If you are a minister, you can go to d6leader.net to learn more. So, hey, this is going to be a fun interview. There's no telling what's about to happen because I'm getting to interview a guy that I work with. And uh, so this is going to be fun. I mean, what's fun about this is I'm getting to work with D6, but on the side, I do have a site called parentministry.net. And uh, the guy that I'm about to uh, 
interview uh, is on that team with me and is, is uh, somebody that I think highly of and get to work with a lot. He's also, though, a follower of Christ. Good job. i uh, starting with that. Hey, number on one. your bio. A husband, a dad, a pastor. A volunteer. Volunteer. Okay, a human being. Uh, a someone, vol. Someone no. Someone who breathes air. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, a vol. A titan. A titan. Because we have that in common. Tighten up. Go Titans. Go Vols. Mariota. Mariota. So, and so serves uh, Grace Community Church in Clarksville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And he's the executive pastor. He served in multiple family ministry roles. He's been a kid, student, and family pastor for 16 years. He's also the team, he's also the team leader at parentministry.net for kids. And he drinks way too much diet. Mountain Dew. Dew. Michael, Woo. how fun is this, man? This is a first. This is our first I mean, First podcast. you've been the interviewer. Uh, Absolutely. The, I've interviewed, but, but you've I've never, never interviewed me. Let's get it. What's going to happen? It. Well, we're going to talk about how to serve the modern family. Okay. Because uh, you've talked at a lot of seminars. I've seen yep. you. You've, you've blah, blah, blah. You're, you're speaking here at D6. Yep. You've spoken at Orange. You blah, all over the place. Okay. And I heard a training that you did a couple of years ago called uh, The Modern Family, How to Minister to the Modern Family. And that's what I want to talk about because I believe this is essential for yeah. family ministers and age-graded ministers that are listening. So how does the church serve the modern family? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm so, um, I'm intrigued by the new family. I mean, uh, my family growing up looked like the, the normal family. Um, but in reality, behind the doors of our home, there was nothing normal about what was happening. And, uh, you know, what I've seen is that uh, my family growing up has actually become the new normal. And I think the modern family just looks different from from what a lot of us expected it to be and what a lot of us expected it to look like. And and so serving the modern family, the family today means that we put aside like our ideas of what it should be. And we just come to terms with like, what is reality? Like what's really happening at home, and the truth is, is that uh, families look a lot different today. Mm. Families uh, come in all different sizes. Um, you know, single parent homes are not the exception; they're the norm. Like that's like that's like a normal thing. Blended families are the norm, um, and and even families that still look like the traditional structure are all affected and connected to these other families that just look different, feel different. And so some, at some point, church leaders have to expand our horizon of who are the families that we're serving. And that's the heart behind all those talks is just really just open your eyes and look around and realize that you're inviting all of this this beautiful mess in and that God, even though it looks different and even though it might be what we thought, like God's really working in that. And God's calling us to serve those those families with passion and just figure out what is it, what does it look like to serve um, the family when it looks so different than what we may have expected it to be hmm. a few years ago. I love that. So you served as a youth minister, kids minister, yep. family minister, but now you're in a pastoral role. Uh, so as a pastor, if you could go back and give your youth minister <laughs> self some tips, yes, uh, what would they be? Um, there, there are several. Uh, I think, I think if I could, if I could go back and tell youth pastor uh, Michael, I would say, um, get behind the vision and get behind the vision of your church and your senior pastor more, and get behind it quickly. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that happens, you know, as young leaders is we get behind the vision of, of our senior leaders when we, when we bind to their vision and we understand who they are, then we can actually have some partnership across the board. And we're not fighting against the church. We're fighting with the church for life change. And sure, youth ministry may look different. But it can also be a part of the bigger, beautiful thing that is this beautiful thing called the church that, that I really think is, is awesome. So I would tell him that. I would tell him spend uh, more time with parents. Hmm. I would and spend more time with parents. And not a lot, but a little less time with kids and is a little bit more time with parents. You know, I've heard several people this even this week talk about that. And that's really true. Like, like even if you don't have kids yet. Invest in parents. Mm. Spend time because when you spend time with parents, you actually become a better expert of of the teen that you're serving. Because parents will tell you the truth. You want to know what a teenager is really like? Ask mom and dad about what's happening at home. I think those two things because those are things that I missed. Like that world fighting for a relationship with my senior pastor. I didn't do very well. And also that that idea of really just spend time relationally discipling parents. 
Because a parent, a parent that's taking a step, and again, we're talking about the modern family. It doesn't matter what their family looks like. It doesn't matter blended. It doesn't matter if it's the traditional look. It doesn't matter if it's a grandparent raising their child. It doesn't matter what it is. Like if you help that parent become a, a, a stronger follower of Jesus, then you actually increase their chances of becoming a spiritual hero in the home. Mm, I love and it. That's just by time. It just comes by time. So that's what I would tell young me. Okay. Not gray beard me, no beard me. <laughs> so ministering to modern family for yeah. you, uh, part of that is the rites of passage stuff, yes, right? Yes, so 100%. You, you and your wife, Chelsea. Yes, the she, one the only. I know. You guys actually created the kids' mm-hmm. rites of passage. Y'all are yeah. the ones who wrote that material uh, for our parentministry.net. So, uh, and your church has been doing it now for a couple of years. A couple of years. Uh, so why are rites of passage so important and how did they help minister to the modern family? Well, one of the cool things I can do is first off with the rites of passage, if you want to see an example of what that looks like, you can go to graceclarksville.com and backslash parents, and you can see what that looks like digitally for our church. And you can find all of that kind of thing. So if you're listening to this, and you're wondering like, how, how, do, how do I, what are you talking about? A rite of passage is, is basically a spiritual moment of blessing. It's a moment where it's a, it's a set up moment, a planned moment where a, uh, a parent speaks into the life of a child spiritually and blesses them. And so I like to think of it as like a spiritual, um, a spiritual, you're helping when you do a rite of passage, you're creating a spiritual magic moment in the heart of a child because they need to hear us talk about spiritual things. And so we sat down and we had seen what you had created from the teen side. And we said, okay, what would that look like for the kid side? And yeah, we, we wrote some of that, but more importantly, we put it into practice with our church because we just simply, and again, are all parents going to take advantage of this? No. That's one of our biggest struggle is, is convincing parents, hey, this matters. And I know it's scary and I know it's unknown, but you can do it. And it really matters that you bless your child. Like year after year after year, because as they grow, they're changing. That's part of the deal with the yearly rite of passage experiences. As they change, we're hitting different things where where kids are like crying out for like affirmation and direction and bottom line blessing. And you know, blessing is just such a part of look at the Old Testament mm. and you read scripture and you see over and over and over again where where you know where where people are blessing others. They're blessing their kids. They're praying for God's blessing. And like, we see that, like, it's a powerful thing. It really does matter. And it matters when we talk about generational discipleship, which is a big kind of idea of D6, is that that passing that blessing down, it won't happen by accident. No. It it does not. I know you've seen that. I've seen that. It just doesn't happen by accident. I I told you a while ago, I'm a big Tennessee fan, and in a few weeks, I'm taking my daughter to her first UT game. Mm. I've been planning. This, I've been planning this moment though for a long time, mm. and it's going to be a really cool moment. That fourth grade daughter is going to have that. We've got to come to that same kind of perspective. Of and I care about the Vols and I love football, but we've got to take that same passion back to our our faith and say, oh, faith matters. So let me just create these moments, just like we would their birthday party, just like we would with, and we try to do those. We try to encourage parents, do these blessings around their birthday because it's just natural. It's like a natural moment. You're already planning to celebrate. Well, include, include a spiritual element. Mm, and uh, so, it. yeah, it's just, it's a way to pass down blessings. That's what all, and there's other guys doing that. We talk about milestones of Brian Haynes. There's all kinds of great resources out yeah, there yeah. to be able to do that and put For it into sure. action. But, you know, we just happen to get a chance to be a part of it. And so it is taking root. Again, go online, look at the digital version of what that looks like and kind of see some of that from what we do at graceclarksville.com. I love it. I've watched your church fight to be healthy over the past yeah. few years. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, we won't go into all the details, but it's really been, been awesome to watch. You know, you've had to go through a lot. So how would you, I think you're uh, experienced enough now to speak to this. Three years in. How yeah. would you define a healthy church? And what have you learned about maintaining that health over these past few years with your church? Well, I would define a healthy church as a church that's willing to make hard decisions in order to honor the Lord. I think that's the first element of it. Like a church is not healthy that shies away from conflict. A church is not healthy that hides their junk. 
a, a, a church is not healthy that won't address the needed issues and problems. And so we've tried over the past few years to be one that addresses the issues, you know, as a church and just says, hey, we're going to we're going to be honest with that and we're going to we're going to confront problems we need to confront them and um, but also i mean a healthy church is one that just as the, as, and they when they courage to do to honor the lord and and confront whatever issues they've got to confront and basically define reality and address it and move forward once you do that everything else comes down to clear healthy churches understand why they do what they do and this is what we learned over the past 3 years we learned that strategy is not enough, that value matters as much as strategy. And you and I grew up in a time where we had to shift the strategy of the church, didn't we? Like churches were just a, a, a drift and like terrible strategy. Well, we did. And we grew like crazy in our town. But guess what? Pretty soon there were five other churches mimicking or adopting our strategy. And guess what was happening? They were growing and having success too. And at the end of that, healthy churches know not only what they do, they know why they do it. And so we kind of rallied around over the past couple of years, three core values that now we're not just saying, hey, this is what we do. We, we're telling our people, this is who we're trying to become as a church and use an individual. And see, and that comes back to the parents. That, that brings the parents as they, they're part of the church. And, and we've got parents all on the spectrum engaging our church, discovering faith, very, and then following Christ, deeply following Christ, all on the spectrum. But for every one of them, we're saying, hey, take your next step to become a growing follower of Jesus. And this is, and then we're painting a picture of this is who we're trying to become. Not just what we're trying to do. And when a parent, when an adult in a service takes their next step spiritually, they go home and they, they live that out at home. And that's where the church and the, that's another part where the church, and we think of this as programmatically like youth pastors and children's pastors. We get all uptight about like, oh, we need another, pro we need another parent discipleship meeting or program. No, what about we get our parents into the gathering? And what about we get our parents into community groups? And what about we get our parents like sacrificially giving? sacrificially serving of themselves and watch like Jesus changing from the inside so that, hey, the youth ministry, the, the kids ministry, the adult, we're all like on the same journey together. And I can tell you that's happening a lot in our church. We're high-fiving each other. We're celebrating what's happening in other areas because like we want the first grader to take their next step and the 33-year-old, like both. So, I mean, that's a long way to say I'm going to tell you, Jeremy, and you've watched us do this. It's worth the fight. So if you're a, if you're listening to this and you're a family, like I just tell guys all the time, it's worth the fight. In fact, and you've been a part of this too. Yeah. And I think you'd agree with it. It's worth losing your job <laughs> over fighting for a healthy church. Yeah. That's what I believe. And that's what my wife and I put our, we put our tails on the line and said, eh, it's worth ending all this here in order to fight for what's healthy. So how do you fight fair? I think I think the way that you you fight fair is you keep the example of Jesus in front of you first. Like I think the lens you you speak boldly, you speak with courage, but you also know that Jesus spoke with humility, and he said he, he literally said, "Hey, don't fight for the first seat at the table. Like be willing to go back. Mm, like hey, that. let others move forward. Hey, let listen. And and there's just an, this attitude of. You know, when Jesus, when people came to Jesus and they had disagreements, the ones that came and asked questions, we see him have dialogue. Mm. The ones who came with an agenda, the, the people who came with an agenda and with a bitter tone, it's funny, man. Jesus just shuts them down. And I think it's a balance. You're going to mess up. You know, we want to fight fair. Here's the, you got to have, give yourself grace. You're going to have to have many, many moments as you fight for health where you look at your leadership, you look at your people in your ministry, and this goes for every leader, and you say, I'm sorry. Mm. And you like you literally call them on the phone or you meet them in face or have them coffee and you say, I didn't, I dishonored you. And, and can, can, can you forgive me? Mm. A leader that will not say I'm sorry is not a leader that's worth following, period. Period. And so, period. So... So we, but we, we all want that leader, don't we? I mean, you want it, I want it. We all want the leader that's willing to say, but what I found is, because I sat in the first chair for a little while, 
it's harder. It's just you got to be willing to, to do it, too. Yeah. If you want it, if you want the kind of leader that says, I'm sorry, be it first. Yeah. And model that. Even uh, lead up. Lead up that. Model that humility. And do that with whatever position you're in now. Because one day as God elevates you, the pressure gets on, man. It gets harder and harder to say, I'm sorry, because you want to get angry. Yeah. And so you just you just can't. So when... When you guys hear this, you understand why Michael Bain's a part of our team. He's amazing. Because <laughs> I'm a mess. You're awesome, dude. I'm a and mess. I appreciate you. If you guys want to follow him on Twitter, it's at Michael underscore Bain. Yep. Uh, he writes at paraministry.net forward slash blog, but you're also about to release. I'm about to relaunch. Is that secret? Yeah, no. Nope. No, nope. Okay. It's okay. not secret. It's not really secret. I, my church was is kind enough. They gave me a sub. When, you, when this comes out. I will have it maybe be on my sabbatical. My first ever. I've been at my church. I'm working on my ninth year, and I'm actually getting a six week sabbatical. And in that one of my projects, I'm going to relaunch MichaelBain.net. And now, after three years, talk about some of these lessons I've learned um, in sitting in the first and the second seat of the organization, um, and kind of process those. And because I, I don't that. feel like I could even say it until now. So I yeah, look, look for that. It'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. Hey, thanks for being with us. You are Thank awesome. You. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks love for your you, partnership. Man. And I genuinely love you too. Awesome, dude. Man love. Bro love right here. Go Titans. Go Titans. Go Vols. Go Vols. Mariota. Forever. Are you looking for the right conference to attend this year? The D6 Conference is a family ministry conference designed for your entire ministry team. Come hear from over 30 speakers and network with churches that share your passion for reaching families. Family ministry isn't just another program. It's one of the most important things your church can do to make a difference in your city. At the D6 Conference, you'll be inspired and equipped to take your family ministry to the next level. To learn more about the D6 Conference, just go to d6conference.com. Welcome back to uh, the weekly meeting of the Michael Bain Fan Club, uh, right. of which we are the founding great? members. I uh, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Um, that's the whole point. Uh, I remember when I was on staff at a church, uh, the pastor uh, was had all the ministers around, and he picked, it wasn't me, it was the children's minister, and he said, hey, we need to do something about special needs. Uh, and he just looked at the children's minister and said, you're in charge of that. And and I'll never forget the look on the children's minister's face. He was, he he's he he didn't know what to do. And if only he knew about our uh, next guest that we're going to be talking to, Marie Cook, he would uh, have had a best friend there, wouldn't he, Ron? Absolutely, he would. And you know, some people have jobs, other people have callings. Mm. You're going to quickly see that Marie has a calling. Yeah. Well, let's let's hear from her. She's going to be talking about special needs ministry, and I don't care what kind of ministry you do, this is going to affect you. So let's listen and check it out. Okay. I'm here with uh, Marie Cook. She is the co-founder of Nathaniel's Hope. She's been a speaker at D6. She's been a friend to our ministry for a long time, and uh, it's great to spend this time with you, Marie. Thank you. Welcome to the D6 Leader Podcast. Thanks, Ron. Great to be here. Absolutely. Now, you have started a ministry that really touches a heartfelt need that started out personal in your life. Can you tell us how this ministry founded and then we'll kind of get into the key question here? Sure. So 18 years ago, we were kind of just rolling along in life. Everything was going great. Um, and I got pregnant with our third child and um, he was born with multiple special needs, completely unexpected. And he kind of brought us into the whole world of disability, you know, uh, that was very foreign to me. And uh, he was a very involved child, you know, his care was involved 24-7 and brought us into the whole world of disability. And we kind of fought for his life for four and a half years. And then he unexpectedly had a change of address from earth to heaven. And when that happened, we just felt it wasn't the end, it was the beginning. And God had brought us into this community. And now we had a responsibility and opportunity to take this and steward this um, circumstance and help others, you know, uh, that had kids with special needs. Yeah, absolutely. So when, when a church realizes they have a family who has a special needs child or a member of their family with special needs, they're not in the medical community, what, is, what should be their reaction? What, how do we address this? Because this is, not, this is not a big issue for like multiple families. It's usually isolated. I know in our church, 
We probably have four or five. We're a church of a thousand or so. So smaller churches, they're asking, how do I deal with this? Am I qualified? So what's your advice for churches who identify this as a need and what, what's their first two to three steps. Sure. Well, if you have any children with special needs or people with disabilities in your church, you have a special needs ministry. You know, and I always say you don't have to have a name on the ministry. It's not about a program, but it's about the kids and the people you're serving. So it's looking at those individuals and figuring out how do we minister to them, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all about relationship, learning about them, getting over your fear and your intimidation of what the disability is. There, you know, there's over, um, there's over 50 million people in the U.S. with disability, and only 10% of these people go to church. And it's because mm. oftentimes our churches aren't equipped to reach this population. So the first thing is to do is just to be intentional about going to the family and asking them, you know, uh, how can we serve your family? How can we include your child? Help us get to know your uh, child, you know, so that we can better minister them on Sunday morning. Excellent, excellent. So when they've identified the very first family in their church and they have special needs, what should they do then? They, they know it, you realize it, you, like you said, there's we know the population, but what's the steps they need to take? Right, then? so I think it's it's just getting personal with the family and, re, and being intentional to reach out to the family and say, you know, we know um, you have a child with special needs, we want your child to be with us, you know, and, and really welcome them in, because a lot of times parents feel like, my, I can't bring my child here because they're so different, or they're, mm. the church isn't gonna be able to care for them, and, and parents have to fight for everything. They fight insurance companies, they fight um, school systems, but they shouldn't have to fight the church. So how uh, incredible is it when churches open their arms and say, you are welcome to be here and we want your child here. Help us learn about your child because we're afraid of what we don't know. So when we can educate ourselves and we can learn about the child that has autism and, you know, tell me a little bit about autism, you know, how do they, how does this impact a child on a Sunday morning? What can we do right. as a church to be better equipped? What are the three or four most common special needs that churches deal with? I think, you know, you, I mean, you ha may have kids with physical disabilities that come in, you know, obviously. Autism is a huge one. I think it's like now one in um, 58 boys are diagnosed with autism. Mm. So that's incredible. That's an wow. incredible statistic yeah, uh, to see that. We see a lot of kids with learning disabilities coming in, ADD, ADHD, um, mm -hmm. that's happening right now. So it, it's hard when you tell a church to get equipped for special needs ministry. You can't say, here's a package of how to do it. You've got to look at the child, and it takes time. It's messy. It's yeah. intimidating, but you have to get in there and learn about the child in order to care for them. Do they need one champion, kind of one person who's willing to step up and go, I'll research this, I'll take that lead on it? Uh, how, how do you... How well, do you start? What, what's I think I think a, well, a church as a whole has to um, make an intentional effort that people with disabilities will be open because when these kids start showing up and they have out of the box behaviors, you want the church to understand why these kids are part of the body of Christ. I mean, we don't include them. It's like you're cutting off the finger, the the elbow, you know, a certain part of the body. Mm -hmm. But um, but it does take somebody to get to know them. But it's not just one person. You really have to build a team of people so the ministry doesn't revolve around one person, you know, and one of the ways that you can really do that is an intentional way, maybe to provide respite care where you can build relationships mm -hmm. with kids and, and um, be able to then understand kids and get over your fear. It's really about yeah. getting over your fear of disability. My son didn't come with a manual. I didn't know how to care for mm -hmm. him. Most kids don't come with a manual. Yeah. It's just learning about the child and, and um, being able to then um, build a relationship with them and introduce them into the things of the church. So when a church expresses the fear, they don't know what to do, what's the resource they can come to? Would that be Nathaniel's Hope? We would love for them to come with, to us, and we'd be happy to equip yeah. them. You know, part of our, our goal is to um, just educate and equip the local church, you know, taking people like me who knew nothing about disability and equipping them so they can visit us at nathanielshope.org, and we'd be help, awesome. happy to reach out. And so last question I want to have here is what does this do for the parent of the child when the church is actually prepared? You know, it's like it's like the church is being Jesus with skin on. <laughs> Oh, that's, wow. that's about the best way that's to put great. it, you know, yeah. and it's it's a very practical way, um, you know, um, people, the, the parents need to know that their child is important and is part of the body of Christ. And I always say if Jesus were here today, he'd be working with kids with special needs, you know, mm. he that was his, you know, he hung around this community and they were important to him because, you know, there are no second class citizens. He's made us all in his image. And there's things that kids with special needs can teach us that typical kids can't teach us. And they're all part of the body of Christ. So. I believe that, you know, it's a very uh, practical thing for the church to do to reach out to this community. Awesome. So if you want to know more about Marie Cook or her ministry, nathanielshope.org, 
and really do a, a, a very honest assessment of your church and see if this is not your next step or the next uh, transformation that you have for ministering to families who truly have more than just the special needs. They have spiritual needs that go hand in hand with that. So come to NathanielsHope.org, introduce yourself, find out what's happening, and, and, and go forward from here. You know, one of the best things we can do uh, sometimes is just connect people to the right resource, and I think that's what we just did there. If you have a special needs family in your church and you don't know what to do, now you know where you go find some help. Because the church is there to, to help people who are hurting or people who need help along the way, and what better way than to engage in this ministry? Yeah, I've always thought about, you know, sometimes you work for a pastor, you work with leadership that are like, we need 10% growth. We need this much percent growth, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? If you're looking for growth, this is an area where this is instant growth. Yes. You know, if, yes. you do, if you start to work with doctor's offices and different places and just say, hey, we're, we're available. We're a place that they can go to get an hour of relief. That's right. You would, if, if you took the time to prepare for it, you'd be flooded with growth. You it's, know, oh, as much harvest as you want is absolutely. available. Absolutely. And, I, and I, the people who have special needs share with other people with special needs. And I've known some parents, I'm sure you have, who have special needs kids. And they've asked themselves, you know, what was God, you know, doing in this? And they said they came to realize that they had been selected and that they were prepared. Even though they didn't feel like they were prepared, they were selected to minister to this child. So I would turn that back around to the church and say, if you have a special needs family in your church, God has selected you. Wow. And it's time for you to prepare. Even though you didn't think you were, step up now. This is a good good challenge. That is a perfect thing to end on. Let's, and let's do that. Thank you guys for being with us. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please subscribe to the podcast. We'd love to have that. That way it just shows up in your feed every t- every week. You don't even have to think about it every time we bring out a new episode. Uh, we'd love comments and things like that on iTunes that helps us uh, be seen by more folks and helps us get the message of this podcast out to many other ministers and churches. Also, um, if you uh, want to contact us ever, you can go to D6. I think it's D- at D6 underscore leader is our is our Twitter handle. So you can find us there as well. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys next week. Who do we have next week? Next week we have Timothy Paul Jones. Oh, come on. That's awesome. That guy's smart. He is. That's why he's got three names. Timothy Paul Jones. (laughs) All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks again for listening. Listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. And if you're a minister, we invite you to join the D6 Leader Network by going to d6leader.net.